am headed out the door to school. I'm only going for a little bit. Um, we have our welcome back video today, so that's going to be interesting. I always love the getting together with everybody and the welcome back to schools. Last year was awesome because they had um, everybody back at the same place at the same time. So that was kind of cool. They hadn't done that in a while. But I'm going to be alone in my classroom watching it on the computer. The reason I'm going in is my partner and I are putting together some bags for our incoming third graders with some uh, things that they're gonna need. Sorry, I keep touching my glasses. My eyeballs are burning this morning. Um, they're not used to being up this early. <laughs> it's currently 7.25, so it's not early right now, but um, I am headed in and our meeting starts at eight. So when I get home, um, I have a lot more stuff to work on. This evening though, I plan to film my book review, if that works out. Talk to you soon. Hello, I am just popping on quickly. Hopefully it'll be fairly quick um, after a very, long day of work today. It was about 14 or so hours and I'm not done. So yeah, welcome back. <laughs> anyway, technology is super great when it works and um, that's all I'm going to say. But it's okay. We're, we're going to figure it out. It's okay. It's fine. Everything's fine. So my uh, reason for being here right now is I was going to do a quick book review. I'm using my light and I don't like the googly eyes, but maybe if I sit over here, I don't know. Let's see what it looks like off. That's not so bad. Okay, I'll just leave it off. Okay, so the first book I wanted to talk about that I read was, I, I think it was in this order, but it doesn't even matter. I Owe You One by Sophie Kinsella. I love this author. This is, sorry, I bumped the table. This is the author of the Shopaholic series and many, many other books. She is hilarious. She is a British author, I believe. I mean, I'm thinking she is because her books all take place in uh, London, any, or somewhere, let's see if it says here, yeah, she lives in the UK, so from the UK, anyway, she has got a big long list of books that she has written, um, and that's, I'll just hold it still for a minute if you want to look and see, I would recommend any of her books that I've read with one exception. And that one exception, I am going to give another try, not right now, but at another time, because I feel like um, sometimes if I pick up a book and I'm just in the wrong state of mind, it's not the book, it's me. So the one that was the exception was 20s Girl. I don't know why. It just didn't, it didn't interest me at all. I read maybe 20 pages and I was at the library, I think, and I just put it back. This book is really, really cute. It literally, probably more than any of her other books, well, I say that now because I just finished this one, but probably more than any of her other books had me kind of like sitting on pins and needles until the very end, until the resolution. It is about Fixie Farr, I don't know how I would not remember that name. Um, Fixie Farr is the main character and her name is really Fawn, but she goes by Fixie because that's what she does. She fixes, she can't stand to see anything that uh, is out of place or that needs fixing, including relationships, people, problems. Um, she wants to fix them. And so her nickname is Fixie. Well, she, um, Again, I struggle with how much do I say, like how much do you know from the back cover, how much do you know the first chapter in, but she is in a relationship that is just, um, you know right away when you start reading about this relationship. I'm sorry I'm playing with my hair, but I have a hair that's like stuck and it's yanking on my brain. Um, she is in this relationship and it's just, I mean, horrible. Like the, the, the guy is just a, just a jerk. And so um, she ends up, at the very beginning of the story, she ends up finding a cell phone. 
and I'm not going to say a whole lot more about that. It won't ruin anything, but she finds the cell phone. Hers has gone missing, and she's desperate because she's lost something really important, and she really needs to give a phone number to the place where she lost this important thing. I, I don't want to tell you. Um, and so she gives the cell phone that she just finds. Well, turns out it's a work cell phone from a company who ends up, uh, she ends up talking back and forth with the company owner. And it's just hilarious. And she is just a lovable character, but you kind of want to slap her upside the head because she doesn't make really great guy choices. But she also has a uh, some issues with her family. And um, the book is kind of about relationships, basically. But in a funny way, Sophie Kinsella just has a way of her writing style is just really funny to me I don't know I think for everybody if you've read the shopaholic series you kind of know what I'm talking about but anyway different totally different character um, than the shopaholic series but equally enjoyable so this one I would give I would definitely give this a 4 or 4.5 out of 5 gold teacher stars okay the next one oh my goodness this one have you seen me Holy tamales. The, what's a tamale? I don't even know. Holy guacamole. This book was so good. It was um, up until the end, it was uh, like a, a cliffhanger. But um, I'm drawing a blank again with the character's name here. Allie. Okay. So Allie... Uh, Oh, okay. I can say some things because it happens in the first chapter. Allie shows up, and it's also on the back of the book, at her work one morning, and she realizes she has forgotten her uh, key card. And so she asks somebody to let her in, and she goes in and she realizes not only has she lost her key card to the main um, uh, building, but also her office. She can't get in. So she uh, asks the person to let her in, gets into the main area, and sits and waits. She looks up, sees her boss, and says hello, and he's just absolutely astounded to see her because she hasn't worked there in five years. And so the whole story is about her piecing together why she has been in this dissociative state and where two days of her life have gone and why. And it's like a wild goose chase trying to find out who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. I was literally guessing until pretty much the very end. I had, I was sure I knew who the bad person was and I was wrong. And then even, even at the very, very end, I thought I was going to get another surprise, but it didn't happen. So it was wild and crazy. The only thing, was this the one? Isn't this sad when I can't even remember, like, the exact ending but um, no this was this was good yeah yeah um, well the very very ending I kind of feel like like literally the last two or three pages I feel like it kind of just petered out like just kind of disappeared uh, like dot 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 you know I'm like okay well a more definitive ending maybe but literally I keep saying literally literally really good book it's very good. I would give this one also probably 4.5 out of 5. Um, when I think of a 5, when I'm thinking books, I think of my all-time favorites, um, Grapes of Wrath, Love, I mean, like, one of the most amazing books I feel like has ever been written, um, East of Eden, The Good Earth. Those are probably, probably my three all-time favorite books. And they're all older, but, I mean, like, they've stood the test of time. Um, Barbara King Solver's The Poisonwood Bible, that's another one I'd probably give five stars. There are just certain books that, like, I would pick them up and read them again if, you know, people didn't keep writing so many other new books that I have to read. But those three, I would, they, they would be my measure to measure all other books, too, and that would be a five. So... For me, I feel like to give a book a 4.5 is a, an amazing score. But I would give both of these books a 4 to 4.5. I think they're both 
really good. Um, the next one and the only other one that I'm going to talk about right now is afterwards. And I called it afterthought on my last vlog and I really don't know where that came from. Anyway, I don't have the book here because I borrowed it from my library, but it was called Afterwards by Rosamund Lupton. And I linked it in my last video and I put a little picture of it here. I'll do that again since I don't have it to hold up. It was honestly, I keep saying honestly and literally, but really honestly, literally, it was one of the better books I've read probably in the last five years. And that's saying a lot because I read a lot. Um, if you know this author by any other book, it might be the book called Sister or Sisters. I'll try to find a picture and put it here also. Um, but they sell it on Amazon. I've seen it. It pops up every time I type in, you know, to see authors' names. Um, so that book was, it had the most creepy, crazy, amazing ending of probably any book I've ever read. And it, I can still remember, like I get goosebumps when I think of how that book ended. It's not for the faint of heart. If you don't um, want to read some really disturbing uh, things and I believe that book had some kind of language. If that bothers you, don't even pick up that book. But the story itself was wow. The other one though that I just finished afterwards was amazing. It was told, okay, it was a story of a family um, who they were at a field day event essentially it was in England. All the books I've been reading have happened in another country. Maybe I'm trying to escape? I don't know. Um, it took place in at on a school campus um, on field day and a fire broke out at the school and there were injuries. Bad injuries. And so the story is told exclusively from, well, yes, exclusively, from the points of view of two of the injured people. And I'm not going to say any more than that because the way that it's told is amazing. And the whole story is also a mystery. They're trying to figure out who um, was responsible for the fire, was it arson, what happened. And I'm not going to say more than that. All these mysteries that I read. Um, but it was absolutely phenomenal so I've gotten really really lucky the last several books I've read have been winners so that one again um, afterwards by Rosamund Lupton and um, she also has several other books so I downloaded that one to read from my public library using the Libby app and I am going to go on and get more books by her as well Right now, I'm reading a book. Let me look it up. I don't want to butcher the uh, title because I'm half away. I'm reading, it's called Such a Fun Age. You've probably heard of it. It's by Kylie Reed. There it is right there. And um, let's see. I'm also listening to Cooked right there. See if it will focus. There we go by Michael Polan. Polan? Polan. Anyway, and I have a few other ones and I just don't even know what... Okay, I'm going to just show you this one really quickly. I just pulled it up from my already been returned. There's the Afterwards by Rosamund Lupton, in case you're like me and you need a visual, but I'll try to put it back where I said I was going to put it. I think I put it in another video as well. Anyway, those are the books I wanted to talk about this time around. Um, it is pretty late, so I don't know when this video will be uploaded. Probably tomorrow night. We're officially back on Wednesday with children. So tomorrow we have our open house, which is virtual. We're going to have two um, meeting times where parents can come into a Teams meeting with us and their kids. I hope they bring their kids and I get to at least see their little faces. That would make me very happy. So that is tomorrow. And then Wednesday, we're back with kids. So wish all your teacher friends luck. We're really not okay. 
And I know parents, you're really not okay too. But we'll be okay. It'll be okay. Everything's fine. We're fine. Until I talk to you again, the next video I have um, planned some things I was going to show you um, that I was making for my classroom. So uh, tentatively this week, but this week might just be like a whoosh and over before I know. It's already like today's Monday, right? Yeah, it's already almost Tuesday. So if I don't see you soon, I will just not forget, uh, you know, I'll keep video clips going and then I'll do my best to um, get a video made. Until I see you again though, please remain positive about the world we live in. If you found anything remotely entertaining or interesting or helpful about this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to help me grow my channel. Thank you. Have a wonderful night.